by transcription. Me? I'm Jane Stacy. Her? That's Irma Peterson. The only girl in the world who is so stupid she thinks a monsoon is a French gentleman. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Look at her smiling and waving that box of ends. What's the idea, Irma? Oh, I'm happy. I don't get it. Well, when a dog is happy, he waves his tail. I haven't got a tail, so I'm waving my ends. <laughs> <laughs> Well, friends, you'll be happy, too, when you see how quickly ENDS chlorophyll tablets stop triple O. Yes, ENDS, E-N-N-D-S. Stop odors of body, odors of breath, odor of fence. Stop all three, all at the same time. Keep you fresh as a daisy all day, all over. It's amazing, but one or two tiny ENDS tablets daily are all you need to stop triple O. And now, ENDS, America's most popular chlorophyll tablets, are proud to present your favorite comedy show, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane in... My Friend Irma. Now, let me see, uh... Eleanor Roosevelt calls her column My Day. What's this? No, I can't use the title My Day. So I think I'll call it My 25 Hours. 25 Hours? Yes, remember, this is leap year. The days are longer. <laughs> Irma Peterson, what are you raving about? Gee, didn't you know I'm writing a column? Oh, sure, and I'm wrestling gorgeous George at the Yankee Stadium. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. Read this letter. Well, let me see it. Uh, Miss Irma Peterson, we have your note in which you state that our paper, The West Side Shopper, lacks appeal for women. We would welcome any contribution our readers can make, be it a sentence, a paragraph, a column. Well, look what it says here. Naturally, as far as payment is concerned, you must understand it will be great. Where? Right there. Irma, it says as far as payment is concerned, it will be gratis. <laughs> That's plural. <laughs> Gratis means for nothing. You mean they won't pay me for the column? Well, Irma, this newspaper is given away for nothing, and with a column by you in it, they may find it hard to get that price. <laughs> I'm not going to let you discourage me. I've already written my first column, and I think it's pretty good. Why don't you look at it? All righty. I think I went through something like this when you wrote your memoirs. Let me see. My 25 Hours by Irma Peterson. I got up bright and early this morning. Why don't you just make it early? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I had a cold shower. Then for breakfast, I had orange juice, toast, eggs, newspaper, and coffee. Newspaper? Your doctor prescribed roughage? <laughs> you don't think it's good so far? Well, let me put it this way, honey. You say this, this column is going in the newspaper, huh? Yes. I? Well, as you know, newspapers are made from wood pulp, and wood pulp is made out of trees. So now I know why all the willows are weeping. <laughs> why don't you read on? All right, I will. Maybe there's a trace of oxygen somewhere in this carbon monoxide. Let me see. Uh, beauty hints. Girls, to have a lovely figure, do as I do. Bend down and touch your toes ten times. If you have extra long toes, stand back a little, as this is cheating. <laughs> <laughs> to have beautiful hair, wash your head with beer. Keep your mouth closed during the treatment. This may prove to be habit forming. <laughs> Girls under 21 must be accompanied to the beauty saloon by their parents? <laughs> oh, Irma. Gee, what do you think? Well, honey, the West Side shopper is slipped under doors. Would you like to see every house around here with a barbed wire fence around it? Oh, you're just saying that because I wrote the column. You wouldn't say that if Eleanor Roosevelt wrote it. 
Cookie, if Mrs. Roosevelt wrote that column, the Republicans wouldn't even have to campaign this year. <laughs> now, please stop comparing yourself with that wonderful woman. She's a humanitarian. She's doing great work for the United Nations, and she knows all the outstanding personalities of the world. Uh, I know personalities, too. See what I wrote here under social items? Amber Lipscott, well-known girl Sandhog, was trapped under the Hudson River for three hours. She was rescued by Freddie Fulton, prominent frogman, and they have been jumping around together ever since. <laughs> if this is Walter Winchell with a gun, please come in. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. O'Reilly. Girls, wait till you hear the news. Now, wait, don't say anything until I get my pencil. Pencil? Oh, sure. I'm just doing a column for the West Side Shopper. Oh, I read that paper every day. Where's your column going to be, Irma? On the page where they have secondhand bargains. Oh. <laughs> it is not. I'm going to alternate with the obituary column. And when nobody dies, they're going to use my stuff. <laughs> Gee. Maybe we ought to go around poisoning people. <laughs> Janie, you're being cruel again. I'm sorry. Well, she has nothing to lose. Personally, I think it's a, a lot of fun writing about who was seen with whom, what was seen where and why. When my late husband, Officer Clancy, was courting me, our names was always in the columns. Not really. Yes. It always said, what handsome officer was seen with which? <laughs> With which? Yes, and they always made the same typographic letter. They spelled it W-I-T-C-H. <laughs> well, Miss O'Reilly, my column's going to contain beauty yes. hints. Uh, you always say you have a lot of beauty secrets. W would you give me some? Oh, I'd be glad to, dearie. Now, a lot of girls have red hair like mine, and they want to keep it naturally red. So all you do is take the juice of three tomatoes. Yes. Chop up two beets. Add a half a cup of ketchup and a dash of paprika and just rub it into the scalp. It's simple, and the whole thing costs about 35 cents. Is that a la carte or on the dinner? <laughs> is Mrs. O'Reilly in there? Yes, come in. Well, what is it, Professor? Yeah, Mrs. O'Reilly, did you ever hear about the little boy who held his finger in the hole in the dike? Yes. Well, you better send for him. The pipe in my room is leaking again. <laughs> I know. I've already sent for the plumber. Irma, darling, have you written any of your column yet? Yes, I read most of it to Jane. Now I wrote this under cooking hints. Cooking hints? Yes. To all housewives, many of you have trouble stuffing a turkey because it is so dark inside the bird. We suggest you pull the turkey inside out, stuff it on the outside, and then shove it back into place again. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I hear I... You are writing a column? Oh, Professor, tell her she's not cut out for it. She thinks I'm against her. Well, why should we criticize her? She might have fun writing choice bits of gossip about the people in the neighborhood. Such as? Well, cute little things like... When Professor Kropotkin is near Kathleen O'Reilly, the air is full of electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say it's electricity? Is it because you are built like a turbine or because that face of yours is enough to shock anybody? <laughs> now, wait a minute, you leftover from a dog's dinner. <laughs> well, don't go telling anybody to put my name in any paper with yours, Mrs. O'Reilly. My mother thinks I was killed by a truck. Why should I make her miserable? <laughs> You wouldn't be making such a fuss if it wasn't the truth. And remember, the truth never hurts. It doesn't. So how come you wear so many girdles? <laughs> oh, now stop it, the two of you. I won't print a word about either of you in my column. Now listen, there's a little object lesson for you, sweetie. Not only can you break up people's lives by what you print in the paper, but you can be sued. Don't you forget that. Sued? Yes, if you print anything that's untrue, that's libel. Well, go on, Jane. Finish your sentence. That's libel to what? <laughs> no, honey, no. Libel is slander in the written form. I don't understand. Yeah, but let me explain, Irma. Now, if I should say that Mrs. O'Reilly is 90 years old, this is slander. I should say so. <laughs> but if I print that she's 90 years old, this is libel. 
Indeed? However, if I add them both together and say she's 180, this is neither slander nor libel. This is a historical fact. <laughs> Goodbye, girls. Oh, I'm getting right after him. And Irma, if you print anything about me, print me true age. 39. <laughs> Jane, is that slander or libel? Hey, that's neither. That's hallucination. <laughs> Hello? Yes, just a minute. It's for you, Irma. Thanks. Hello? Who is this? West Side Shopper? Oh, Jane, it's my editor, Mr. Fletcher. Uh, yes, Mr. Fletcher. I'm getting my column ready. Huh? Oh, that's too bad. Why don't you call the zoo? The zoo? What are you talking about? He says they have a dead lion at the office. <laughs> Irma, that's deadline. Oh, don't yell at me. I didn't kill it. Oh. <laughs> Give me the phone, will you? Hello. Hello, yes, Mr. Fletcher. Uh, uh, yes, I know. She, she misunderstood you. I, I'm her roommate, Jane Stacy, and I, I see. You say it's very nice of her to volunteer to do this column for nothing? I'm sure you'll get your money's worth. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I mean, of course, she'll have it by tomorrow. Yes, I see. Uh, choice bits of neighborhood gossip. Yes. All right, Mr. Fletcher, I'll tell her. Bye. He wants a column by tomorrow. Why can't I turn in the one I already wrote? Why? Irma, on the masthead of the West Side Shopper is a small picture of Washington crossing the Delaware. Do you want him to jump into the water? <laughs> What shall I do? Well, write a new one, honey. Fletcher wants neighborhood gossip. Just go to all the places you know and find out what's new. All right, I'll go to Schultz, the butcher, and Mr. Wong, the laundryman. Then I'll visit Hogan's Fish Market, and I'll hang around Spike's pool room for a couple of hours. Jane. What is it? Are you sure Mrs. Roosevelt started this way? Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Oh, 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 guard against triple O. Yes, guard against triple O. Odor of breath, odor of body, odor of fence. If you've been using old-fashioned body deodorants, mouthwashes, toothpaste, or deodorant soap to avoid offending, now here's an easier, quicker, much more effective way to keep fresh as a daisy all over all day long. Take, Take ends, ends today. today. Chase Take triple O, o away. away. Yes, one or two tiny ends chlorophyll tablets protect you against triple O, against all three odor offenses. No muss, no fuss. Stop triple O in minutes. Prove it with a famous ends test. Rub an onion slice on your hand. Now take an ends chlorophyll tablet, moisten, and rub it on the same spot. The odor's gone. That's how ends work, where odors begin inside your body to stop triple O. And remember, ends contain 100 milligrams, a fully effective dose of Daritol chlorophyll. Don't expect such lasting protection from cheaper chewing gum and candy substitutes which contain so little chlorophyll. Take, Take ends today. Chase, Chase triple, triple O, o away. Away, away. Insist on ends. Called ends because they end your worries about triple O. That's E-N-N-D-S. Ends chlorophyll tablets. Safe. Safe. Safe as any garden vegetable. Pleasant tasting. Trial size ends. Only 49 cents at drug counters everywhere. Larger sizes even more economical. Walter Winchell, beware. Ed Sullivan, watch out. Sidney Skolsky, look for a new job. Louis Sobel, save your money. Boys, you're in a lot of trouble. Today, Irma Peterson begins her new column for the West Side Shopper. Oh, yeah, there she is at the kitchen table assorting her first scoops. Herman, did you get anything good? Oh, yes, several items. The Jones baby has measles, and Mr. Klotz, the baker, was the first to notice it. So I'm writing it in newspaper style. Newspaper style? Yes. Klotz spots tots dots. <laughs> Klotz spots tots dots? Honey, why don't you jump out that window, land on that cab, so you can write wax back smacks hack? <laughs> What other items did you pick up? Well, I thought I'd write something about the big fire this morning. Well, now you're talking a five-alarm fire. That's news. What did you write? Uh, 
There was a fire on 74th Street. I watched it from the restaurant across the way. Their prices are very reasonable. Hash is only 35 cents. <laughs> is that all you wrote? Well, that's all I ate. <laughs> Irma Peterson, for some crazy reason, I told Mr. Fletcher of the West Side Shopper that you'd have a column ready by 6 o'clock. If this is all the stuff you've collected, I'd better call him right now, tell him to pad the obituary column with Undertaker jokes. Oh, no, Jane. Please don't. I'm going out for more news, and, and I won't have as much trouble now. What do you mean? Well, people didn't believe I was a real newspaper woman, but now I have a press card. You have a press card? Let me see. Press 50. Irma, this is 52. No, Jane, this used to say pants press 50 cents. I tore off the pants. <laughs> Mr. Kraus! Mr. Kraus! Store's empty and the cash register is open. Whew. What's that noise? Oh, it's Mr. Kraus and he's all tied up. There's a handkerchief stuffed in his mouth. Mr. Krauss, Mr. Krauss, I'm now a reporter with the West Side Shopper. Anything you? Alana! Woo! Oh, it's Violet Murphy. Hi, Violet. You're just the person I wanted to see. Yeah, why? I've become a columnist from the West Side Shopper, and I need some gossip. Well, you certainly came to the right person because I have just joined the Gwissen Bees. The Gwissen Bees? Yeah, it's our new girls club. Well, how do you spell it? G W S N B M Y. G W S N B M Y? Well, what does the letter stand for? Girls who say no but mean yes. <laughs> Believe me, since I joined this club, I get so much dirt that I could sell my ears to True Confessions magazine. <laughs> Say, do you remember Penelope Cistern? She's practically bald. She had a job in a defense plant, and her hair got caught in a conveyor belt. Oh, my goodness. It took them almost six hours to get her out. Of course, she got paid for overtime. <laughs> oh, wait till I make a note of it. Uh, and naturally, you heard the news about me. What news? Oh, Violet, I didn't notice you're wearing a new engagement ring. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like it? Gee, it's lovely. What an unusual stone. Is that a diamond? No, it's granite. My new boyfriend's a tombstone cutter. <laughs> well, I gotta go, Irma. I'll be looking for your column. <laughs> Okay, Callahan, book him. Sergeant, this is not justice. <laughs> I did not pick that man's pocket. Then how come you had his wallet? Well, the bus lurched suddenly, and the wallet just flew out of his pocket. <laughs> oh, sure. And while I was stooping down to pick it up, his gold watch swirled right in my hand. <laughs> Must have been a pretty rough trip. We'll see that you get a smoother one on the way to Sing Sing. Sergeant, would you write to the warden up there and ask him to assign me to the laundry? I'd like to be near my mother. <laughs> Take him away, Callahan. Oh, hello, Sergeant Mitchell. Oh, no, Irma Peterson, you lost again. Well, we'll have one of the boys take you home. No, Sergeant, I'm not lost. I'm doing a column for the West Side Shopper on local gossip. No, you're wrong. I'm right. Sergeant, here are the witnesses in that accident. Yeah, but that truck was coming. Oh, hello, I'm... Sergeant, that truck was making a left-hand turn. It was making a right-hand turn. Now, how would you know? You were flighting with the truck driver. You started to wink at him. Your false eyelashes got stuck together. You couldn't even see what street you were on. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. I demand my rights. Oh, Al! Shaken! Have been free! What's the charge, officer? Stolen car. I didn't steal it. Fell asleep in the back seat. Oh, yeah? How come? Well, I was tired after walking around all day looking for a job. You looking for a job? Make the charge stealing a car in perjury. <laughs> Take him away. No, no, not my help. Oh, Hal, i got to talk to you, please, officer. All right, lady, you can get in the cell with him. I'll give you five minutes. 
check and I didn't do it. You got to believe me. Why are you looking at me like that? Al, I'm a columnist, and I must print all the gossip of the neighborhood. Well, but do you have to print that I was arrested for car theft? Well, what could I print? Well, couldn't you write that, um, they had a contest here to see who had the prettiest hands. And mine was so beautiful, they insisted on taking my fingerprint. <laughs> no, Al, on the top of our newspaper it says, A pluribus unum. That's French for the truth or nothing but the truth. <laughs> Chicken, if you put my name in your column, we're through. Uh-huh. Okay, time's up. Come on, sister. Come here, I'm rearranging for you. Don't cry, darling. We know what a choice you have to make. I know what it is to be torn between love and duty. Mrs. O'Reilly, I don't know who tore you, but whoever zipped you up did an awful job. <laughs> I'm a darling. I'm here in America. We have something that's called freedom of the press. But freedom of the press is not meant the, the freedom to print everything we want to, but rather the, the freedom to print that which is true. Now, this is something you cannot forget, even though it may mean hurting someone you love. I understand. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember one night I had a battle with my late husband, Clancy. Oh, it was a beaut. We destroyed more crockery than the San Francisco earthquake. <laughs> well, the police come with a reporter, so I told the reporter that Clancy and me was just dancing the rumba. <laughs> Did the reporter swallow that? No, because the reporter said it was the first time he'd seen the rumba danced where the woman kept her foot on her partner's face. <laughs> And you, too, Irma, must learn to recognize the truth. Well, I've made up my mind. I'm going to print the truth about Al, even though I know it'll make me an old maid. Forget Al. Just as long as what you do is accredited journalism. Well, maybe I don't need Al, but on cold nights, it's going to take an awful lot of newspapers to keep me warm. <laughs> Come on, honey. Come on, cheer up. This is your big day. What time does your paper come out? In a couple of hours. You satisfied with the column you turned in? I didn't get the chance to read it. Well, I may have misspelled a couple of words. How many K's in success? (laughs) Hello? Yes. No, Mr. Fletcher, no. This is Miss Stacy. Tell her I'm a what? You took the item about Al out of her column because the man who stole it confessed. Isn't that wonderful? Now, I still have the man I love, and I'm a success. What? Uh, Irma, Irma, uh, hold the success story. What, Mr. Fletcher? You're afraid you'll be sued by Mr. Schultz? Just a minute. Irma, what did you write about Schultz the butcher? Well, he just got married, so I asked him how he met his wife. Yes? He said he was standing on the corner when the heavy set woman came toward him. He looked at her. It was pure fate. Do you know what you wrote? But he was standing on the corner when this heavy set woman came toward him. He looked at her. It was pure fat. <laughs> Back to Irma and Jane in a moment. But first, remember that scientific odor test that proved end stop triple O. Stop odors of breath, odors of body, and odor offense. For over eight out of ten people. Well, these amazing results were substantiated the other day at the annual meeting of a national scientific group. A leading medical authority stated... And for our test, I selected the chlorophyll tablets known as ENDS. Our tests included executives, office workers, and factory workers, too. General odor of body and breath were most successfully treated. Yes, after hundreds and hundreds of examinations, science proved ENDS effective. Just one or two tiny ENDS chlorophyll tablets daily actually do stop triple O because ENDS contain 100 milligrams, a fully effective dose of Daritol chlorophyll. Beware of cheaper chewing gum and candy substitutes that contain so little chlorophyll or that do not state their chlorophyll content on the label. ENDS work inside your body where odors start, keep you fresh as a daisy all over all day long. ENDS stop triple O. Stop all three odor offenses. Give more complete, more lasting protection than any old-fashioned body deodorant, soap, mouthwash, or toothpaste can possibly give you. Insist on ends to stop triple O. 
pleasant tasting ends are easy to use, too. And, and safe. safe. Safe as any garden vegetable. That's E-N-N-D-S, ends chlorophyll tablets. Trial size only, 49 cents at drug counters everywhere. Larger sizes, even more economical. Well, Irma's column came out in the paper. I don't think it was read by many people because the obituary column is back this week. I don't know, maybe there's something about the way she writes makes you wish you were dead. <laughs> But Irma doesn't care. She has her al again to keep her warm. There they are on the couch. <laughs> Listen. You know, Chicken Wicken, when we get married, we'll have a four-room house, a living room, a kitchen, a bedroom, and a nursery. A nursery? Oh, that's wonderful. I always wanted a place to grow plants. <laughs> you know, I grow plants, too. That's right. Bloomin' idiot. <laughs> Name of variety, my friend, Irma. Here's an important message for my friend Irma in the person of Marie Wilson. From Basil O'Connor, president of the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis. Mr. O'Connor. In this year, when we are still reeling from the staggering blows of recent polio epidemics... We've known that only extraordinary measures, only greater giving to the March of Dimes, could put the fight against this disease back on its feet. I have many thoughts about what you have done for this humanitarian cause, Miss Wilson. By your offer of your secretarial services to the highest March of Dimes bidder, you've made a most unusual contribution. It's resulted in a gift of $5,000 to the March of Dimes through the Fort Worth, Texas chapter of the National Foundation, and above all, I think it's been a lot of fun for everybody. So may I just say, Miss Wilson, a very simple and a very sincere thank you to you and your colleagues of the CBS radio program, my friend Irma. I think you know, though, that the real thank you comes not only from me and the National Foundation, but from the children, the victims of infantile paralysis who will be helped toward recovery by what you have done. And so for them, thank you, Miss Marie Wilson. Thank you, Mr. O'Connor. I was real happy to have the opportunity to help with the wonderful work done by the March of Dimes. And, yeah, I, I hope everybody will continue to give their wholehearted support to this very great cause. <laughs> My Friend Irma is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Park Levy, who writes a script with Stanley Adams. Pat Burton is associate producer. Marie Wilson is starring as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin. Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Tired-looking eyes can ruin your appearance, make you look unattractive, dull. So don't take chances. When eyes are red, weary from lack of sleep, glare, driving, get eye gene. Two soothing drops in each eye float away that tired eye feeling at once. Eye gene is like a prescription. Contains Lexitol. Acts as a tonic for the eyes. Safe, gentle, too. Get eye gene. E-Y-E-G-E-N-E. -E -E, tonight, use it daily for bright, attractive eyes. Trial size only 25 cents. Larger sizes even more economical. Eye gene at drug counters everywhere. Be with us next Sunday at this time when ENDS, America's most popular chlorophyll tablets, again bring you My Friend Irma. Carl Caruso speaking. <laughs> now stay tuned for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. My Friend Irma was transcribed. This is the CBS Radio Network.